video will show you how to make Nigerian puff puff. Come on in and welcome to my kitchen. In our last video, I showed you how to make um, oatmeal raisin muffin. If you're yet to see that video, I'll be leaving a link for you in the description section so you can go ahead and watch that video and try it out. Before I go on, I'm very sorry if I'm speaking through my nose, I'm a little bit under the weather. But today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make Nigerian puff puff. There are different names and different um, countries that make this particular sweet treat. I'll be taking you through a detailed journey on how you can achieve Nigerian puff puff from the name it is a soft puffy round ball you know deep fried butter put in that way <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying but there are things that could go wrong if you're trying to make this puff puff recipe and in this video I'll be sharing with you the tips and tricks that I have picked up during the years and I'll also show you what you might be doing wrongly, the results that you will get and also what you need to do to get that very soft from within to outside puff puff that you've been dreaming of. So without us speaking too much, let's head onto the work table and start cooking. But before I leave, if you are yet to subscribe to my channel and you like this teaching style, please click that subscribe button hit the notification bell beside you that is very very important that notification bell so you get instant you know of the instant notification anytime i update any um anytime i upload any movie any video on my channel so without us speaking too much let's head onto the work table and start cooking i separated the dry ingredients from the wet ingredients on the dry side, we have all-purpose flour, fresh nutmeg, cinnamon powder, salt, cayenne pepper for some kick to the puff puff, and my yeast. On the wet side, we have sugar, Evaporated milk, warm water, which should be lukewarm to the skin, not hot nor cold. And I added these aromatic bitters for added flavor. I'm going to start off by proofing the yeast. Pour in about one quarter cup of the lukewarm water into a bowl. Sprinkle on the yeast. And add about one teaspoon of sugar to help activate the yeast. Then give it a stir and set it aside. Next is to mix the dry ingredients together. Pour the flour into the bowl. Add salt, cinnamon powder, cayenne pepper, and grate in the nutmeg. I prefer using this versus the ground one because there is a huge difference in flavors between both of them. Go ahead and mix all this together till well combined. Set this aside and let's proceed to the wet ingredients. Once your yeast starts having some popping bubbles on its surface then you'll know it is alive and good to go pour your sugar to the into the milk 
but wait let me address something here although sugar is dry in nature it will be used as a wet ingredient in this recipe dissolving sugar in the water is one of the tricks to minimize the gluten formation thus giving us a more fluffy puff puff and not a tough dry chewy buns like puff puff add in the aromatic beetles i use this in place of vanilla extract but it is totally optional mix this together i prefer to add the yeast after the vigorous mix because you need to remember that yeast is a living being and thrives only in certain conditions such as lukewarm environment. At the end, we should have two separate mix, a wet and a dry mix. Next, it is for us to bring the wet and dry ingredients together into one batter. Mixing these two separately minimizes the chance of overmixing, thus less gluten formation, and also better thriving condition for the yeast. Let's continue. Create a hole in the dry mix and pour in the wet mix and gently mix your batter as shown. The consistency we are aiming at is a drop batter which is between a poor batter and a soft dough. It should be able to drop from your mixing spatula or stick with less or no resistance and not just pour like water or liquid. Just imagine muffin butter and not thin pancake batter. Another tip I can give to you is to take a spoon, dip in water, scoop and see how it effortlessly drops from the spoon. There you have it. That's what you're looking for. Note. The thinner the batter, the more oil it will absorb. And the thicker it is, the denser and bones like the puff puff will turn out to be. Cover up your batter with a plastic wrap. I like to reinforce mine with a foil wrap to further keep it warm during proofing but a clean towel would do. Create your microwave, if that is what you're using to proof, for about one to two minutes. Once it is done, place your batter in and set your timer to 30 minutes. I did this to be able to show you guys the progress after 30 minutes. As that is proven, let me address the right tool to use for frying this ball of goodness. You can either use a deep fryer, which is most preferable, since it has a temperature control setting to take out the guesswork for you. Or you can go traditionally with a saucepan. But how deep do you need it to be is frequently the asked question. I decided to measure the deep fryer to be able to help us answer this question. The minimum, the minimum point is about 2 inches deep. But looking at these two saucepans, you still need room above the depth of oil. 
but don't worry i will show you in a few slides what can occur if you neglect this little detail of an extra room above let me show you the proofing pro progress at 30 minutes you see it is rising but no popping air pockets here and there is no distinctive yeasty if there's anywhere like that for pop smell so back into the warm spot it goes after about an extra 45 minutes to one hour of proofing the popping air pocket has emerged and my kitchen is smelling already of puff puff now it is time for us to fry create your oil in this first batch i will show you mistakes that i have made in the past while making puff puff Still in the spirit of not over mixing your batter and creating back the gluten that I've already relaxed during proofing. Gently fold the batter, note, not knead, but fold as shown to get out some of the air pockets as much as you can. If you don't, what will happen is that there will be an extra avenue to soak up more oil during frying and we don't want that puff puff is oily already okay for the life of me i cannot get a well-rounded puff puff using an ice cream scoop but i wanted to try it again in this video firstly we need to test if our oil is hot enough one of the tell signs is that the puff puff will float up after a few seconds after a few seconds resting in the bottom especially if you have the right batter to start with mine wasn't ready at this stage so i will have to wait for some more minutes after some minutes i continued but man this scoop was not just working for me so I had to switch to what I really know how to use to achieve my rounded puff puff. Dip your hand in warm water to minimize batter from sticking to it. Gently punch down some of the batter to remove additional excess air pockets. Scoop some of it into your palm. Create a whole shape between the thumb and second finger. And then squeeze the third, fourth, fifth finger against your palm to push out some of the content through this hole created. And then press the first, the thumb and the second finger as if you're closing up the hole to act as the cutting stool. Turn your hand around and let the batter drop into the oil. If you feel some stickiness on, of batter on your hand, scrape off your hand with the tip of, with the edge of the bowl. Dip your hand back into the water and repeat the process don't worry with practice it will become second nature for you now something i want you to pay attention to is how the ball of puff puff has increased the content volume of the pan and thus the oil is almost at the tip of the pan Remember when I said you had to take into account the depth of the pan and not just the level of the oil. 
this is what happens when there is not enough room above the depth of oil the oil will be displaced upward by the added batter leading to potential spill over of the oil and also difficulty turning the puff which is required to achieve even browning although in this video i pulled it through but it was a lot of careful work and it's not safe or even recommended for you to do so another issue here is that the pan has been overcrowded it is not only displacing the oil it has reduced the temperature of the oil and this would delay the time it would take to evenly brown this puff puff and something to notice that the longer it stays in oil the more it will start to look like buns if the batter is right or thick and the more it will soak up oil if the batter in the first place is thin now let me show you the proper way to achieve the round evenly brown tender from inside puff puff that i make down batter scoop into your pan create a hole between the thumb and the second finger Squeeze the third, fourth, and fifth finger against the palm to push out content through the hole created. Once out, press your thumb and second finger together to cut off the content. Turn your hand as shown and allow it to drop while the hole is still closed off. Try not to overcrowd the pan. Turn up your heat level for one or two step increments to bring the temperature back up. Once it's starting to brown, lower the heat back to medium heat. And continue frying what I like to do is constantly stir my balls of goodness for even browning as shown once it is brown to your satisfaction Remove it from your hot oil. If you have taken all the little detailed steps shared in this video, your puff pot should not sit in your oil for too long. It takes mine about 10 minutes to get evenly browned at most. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison. The one on the left is the one that stayed too long in the oil from the oil with lower temperature from overcrowding. The outside was gradually starting to turn hard texture and looking more like bones. While the right one is soft from inside out, it's evenly browned and, the f and also fluffy inside. I hope the tips and tricks that I've shared will be useful for you and your puff puff game will step up. If you like my style of teaching and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for?
Remember to ring the bell beside it while you are at it for instant alert on uploads. Until next time when I see you again, let's learn and cook together. Bye-bye.